Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence and the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Salik Shirazi. May Allah give him a long, lengthy life. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'as. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Sheikh, last time we started a new discussion on Khums. We were talking about uh, the importance of Khums. We looked at Quranic evidences and we looked at Hadith as well. Um, when it comes to Khums itself, on what items, like what categories, does khums become obligatory that we must pay it on? A'udhu billah as-sami'a al-alim min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin Allahumma salli ala rahman There are seven items in which the khums becomes wajib on uh, as a payment um, of course, we're not going to discuss all the seven. We just discuss the ones in which we are facing day to, to day in our life. Uh, but I mention them quickly, and then we we'll go through to the main ones. The first one is the profits and gains from earnings and trade. That's the first category or an item in which the khumus must be paid. So if somebody has a business and they're making profit, uh, whatever is left over, as an excess, at the end of the year, they have to take out one-fifth from that profit and pay it as a khumus. And of course, there are also um, um, those who also work as employees. The same applies to them. When they make income and money, they still have to uh, pay the khumus for whatever is left over at the end of the year. Um, the second one is the halal wealth, which is mixed with the har haram wealth. And that happens in some situations where you have somebody uh, selling haram and halal uh, product. And now they want to start paying homeworks, for example. This is the situation in which they can purify their wealth by paying the homeworks in this case. Uh, number three is the minerals which are acquired. Uh, number four is the gemstones obtained through diving in the sea. Whatever you gain, you have to pay the khumus of that amount gained. Uh, number five is the treasure troves which are found. Whatever you find uh, in the deep ground, for example, that is actually required for the one to pay the khumus for it. So you can't own it because you just found the tre treasure and you want to... Uh, Take it for yourself. Number six is the land that a uh, dhimmi, i.e. the Christian who lives under the government of a Muslim, uh, Muslim country, um, when he purchases from a Muslim, the land in which purchased from a Muslim, this individual who is not a Muslim, when he purchases land from a Muslim, he must pay khumus for it. And that, of course, as I've said, um, some of them we need to discuss more, which face, we face every day in life. And the last one, number seven, the spoils of the war. As I mentioned in the last episode, that uh, in wartime, um, whatever we get, ghanimtum, as the holy verse says, فَإِنَّ لِلَّهِ This is specifically for the war uh, situation and case. Whatever you gain, then you pay hummus from what you have you gained from uh, the aftermath of the war uh, event. Ahsan, excellent, Sheikhna. So, Sheikhna, the first category you were discussing is um, profit and earnings. Um, could you go through that in terms of, of hummus? I mean, we have to pay hummus on profit and earnings? Indeed, um, it becomes obligatory and wajib for the individual who is making some money, either through trade and business or through the income that he is, let's say, an employee in a company or a teacher or even a student who is receiving grants from 
the government, for example, to study university, for example, or college, um, whatever income is gained and owned by that individual, then that becomes wajib for that individual to pay uh, after the expenses at the end of the year, any surplus and any addition and left over from that income to pay one-fifth or 20% or khums of that money uh, for the cause of Allah SWT and um, that whatever supports the religion of Allah SWT to uh, the marja, to the faqih in which uh, they follow. And inshallah we'll come into more details about uh, what share is paid to whom and uh, how it works. So, uh, Sheikhna, um, if I'm, you know, uh, earning X amount of money, how do I calculate how much homes do I have to pay? Do I just look at, okay, this is how much I've saved over the year, um, and I just take, what, one-fifth, 20% of that, and that's it? Is that just how, it, how simple it is? Initially, uh, for those who trade, they have business, those who are making some money, income is coming in. Um, whoever has some kind of um, an amount of money is coming to his or her account, um, they have to initially set a, a day in the year. Let's say the first of Muharram or first of the Hajjah or 10th of month of Ramadan, for example, or I don't know, whatever date, of course, the Hijri dates, the Islamic dates, to set that date so when that individual is, uh, meets that date, that uh, specific date in the year, they have to sit down and calculate whatever they have gained in terms of income. And to calculate and to take out 20% or khums, or one-fifth of that remaining money, which is in the account, or cash in hand, for example, or it could be an asset, or an item that haven't been used, for example, as a gift, gifted to somebody. Or, for example, uh, I haven't used these things, for example. I bought them, I never used them, for example. Mm. Clothing, uh, uh, all the assets and uh, belongings to the one's individual to see if they haven't used it and they have to pay homes for it, for example. So I set a date and I try to calculate whatever I have left over with at the end of the day from the excess money left, as I've mentioned. In, a, in other words, whatever you spend during the year, it's all halal, it's all fine, it's yours. But by the end of the year, that first day of, let's say, Muharram or, or month of Ramadan or 10th of Rajab, for example, whatever date you want to set, you have to make sure that um, Whatever is left over, uh, money or assets, they're all calculated. And then you pay 20% of that amount to the Hakam Shah, to the Faqih. Shaykhna, do I pay annually or do I pay monthly? Can one do his homes monthly, as in he can look at his expenses, how much he's earning, look at his profit, work it out, and then every month pay homes? Or is it done once a year? The payment of hummus is immediate. So if it's today, it's due, then you have to pay today. Um, you have to work out how much is uh, left, uh, the surplus, and you pay it straight away. You cannot delay it. Unless you speak to your marja, to the hakim al-shara, then they can allow you and permit you to delay it, whatever is the reason, or to make installment payments to break it down into monthly, for example. So you have to speak to your uh, marja and alim or the reps of the maraja and to see if you can actually be able to uh, uh, spread the cost, for example, in installments or delay the payment, for example, for the, whatever the reason is, for example. And that should be fine. Sheikhna, what if an individual has more than one source of income? Let's say an individual has uh, a main job, a career he does Monday to Friday. Um, let's say on the weekend he has his own small business that he does, market stores or something. And on top of that, um, he's got his own you know, inherited property and he's got rent coming in as well. This individual, does he have to pay homes on each source of income or just on one source of income and that's, you know, exempts him from the others? 
at the end of the day, those individuals who have income, no matter what the source is, is it a business? Is it a uh, working, let's say, night shifts at a manufacturer, for example, company? Is it um, from somebody who is, uh, for example, they're servicing, for example? Whatever this, the source of the income is, um, is it rent, business, being an employee, as I've said, student getting a grant from the government to study, whatever is left over as surplus to this individual's annual expenses, whatever is left over, so he collects all these uh, sources of the income, uh, the surplus. So let's say he's got 1,000 pounds left over from his business, um, 5,000 from the rent, 2,000 from um, a service he made, for example, provided, and so forth. A grant he received from the government, for example, for his projects. Whatever is left over, weren't spent during the year, then it becomes obligatory for that individual to pay 20% of hummus of that leftover uh, profit or income and um, try to calculate each one separately because you have now different sources. So it's difficult to actually uh, be able to recognize which of which. So try to make sure that accurately calculates uh, what, is, what is left over and then take out 20% uh, percent of uh, that uh, leftover income. Sheikh, what about those who spend um, on the business? So from the business gains and, pro uh, and losses, from the business's uh, profits, they spend on traveling for the business, uh, food and drink, uh, clothes, furniture, of, you know, office wear sometimes you need. Um, are we obliged to pay homes on those items or are those items seen as expenses? These are known as the expenses of, of during the year. In other words, uh, after you paid your previous last year's homes, for example, and now you have entered into the new year, now you can spend by uh, pay and so forth, receive income and spend it during that year. You have all that 12 months to spend and enjoy your life and business. But when it reaches that date, the due date of paying hummus, uh, so whatever is left from those unspent uh, money and wealth, then it is there that you have to pay the hummus. Otherwise, during the year, whatever you spend is fine. It's yours. You spend, you go to holidays, ziyara, hajj, and so forth. Whatever you have done, you, that's fine. Because previously you have paid the hummus for. You've cleansed yourself from the payment of hummus and purified your, 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 your soul and your wealth by paying the hummus last year. So during the year, that year, whatever you spend is fine, it's halal. But when the due date comes and you have amount of money, then you have to make sure that uh, you calculate and you pay the hummus of that leftover money on the due date. Ascent. I think there's a misconception sometimes in regards to hummus that it's on what you haven't spent, not on what you have spent on. It's to do with you know, the surplus, the extra, the savings, rather than I spent money here and there and there, do I own hummus on it? It doesn't really work like that. It's more on what you haven't spent on and what's, what's there, there, the surplus money. Ascent. Sheikh now. Now, there's a controversial question here, so be careful how you answer this one. The mahar, the dowry for a wife, is she obliged to pay khums on that or not? With regard to the dowry or the mahar, there's no khums uh, on paying the mahar. Um, there are actually three exemptions that you don't have to pay khums for. One of the exemptions are the mahar. So when the wife receives the mahar or the dowry from uh, um, the husband, she doesn't have to pay hummus at all. Um, unless the husband hasn't paid the hummus for, and she knows that he hasn't paid it, he doesn't pay the hummus, it becomes wajib on the husband to pay the hummus of this dowry. So if, if she discovers that he, has, he doesn't pay hummus at all, and she receives that amount, and she knows that this amount has not been paid hummus for, she has to go back to the husband and ask him to pay the hummus for this dowry. If the husband insisted not to pay, and sometimes happens, you know, he doesn't believe in hummus, although he's a Muslim and follower of Al-Bayt in this case, it becomes the duty of the wife 
to take out 20% of the hummus of this uh, dowry. Otherwise, in general, uh, the main rule is that there's no uh, hummus on dowry received by the wife from the husband. Ascent. What about inheritance? Uh, if I, my, my father leaves me X amount of money, do I have to pay hummus on, on the inheritance? This is the second exemption for not paying the hummus on uh, inheritance received from the father, the deceased father. Whatever the, uh, um, the sons and the daughters and the children receive from the deceased father, land, property, buildings, money, whatever they receive, there's no hummus uh, to be paid uh, on inheritance. And that makes things even a lot easier for uh, the children and, and the inheritors that they can spend more money now. I mean, compared to today's Western world, for example, <laughs> or, or in, the, in the world that there's inheritance tax. There is, yes, there over is. Over 30% tax. So imagine mm -hmm. how Islam made it easier yes. that uh, you don't have to pay even hummus, which is a wajib, to remove the hummus from the inheritance so that people can enjoy more uh, in their life. So the, the children, uh, they can enjoy, uh, you know, spend the remaining money left from, and the wealth left from their deceased father on their own life to pay their debts, for example, to buy a house, for example, car, and so forth. And it doesn't matter which family member has passed away, it's not just the father, what if the mother passes or the grandfather, whatever inheritance one receives, there's no homes on that. Exactly, the inheritance that's received, uh, who is obliged, I mean, uh, the one who has the right to receive the hummus, mm -hmm. um, nobody else, they are, that, that becomes for them halal and uh, there's no hummus for that. What about if one has paid hummus, has got some money, and has purchased some property. Now this person has passed away now. So this person paid homes. The following year he purchased the property. He's passed away. That property now is inherited by his son. Now the, and that son decides to sell the property. Does the son have to pay homes on the money? So we have homes money paid. The money is now halal and everything's okay. Purchased the property. Um, the, the person who purchased the property passed away. The son inherited the property. A couple of years have gone. Property value has gone up. He's decided to sell the property. Is homes uh, uh, I mean, um, obligatory upon that sale? You see, the initial inher inheritance which is received by the sons or the children of that deceased father, for example, that inheritance, there's no... Uh, homes on it but when they buy with that money a land or, or a property and the value goes up every year they have mm -hmm. to pay homes for that extra and excess oh. value uh, okay. of, of the property or land when it goes up let's say it went up this year 20% from this 20% whatever is the amount they have to pay homes out of this 20% which has gone up or 30% has oh. gone up uh, the initial money is halal, is, there's no requirements to pay the hummus for. But when it's spent and bought something and the value goes up and, the, and they haven't actually used that property mm -hmm. or, or that item, so they have to pay hummus for that value which the went increase. up, the increase, exactly. MashaAllah, Shaykh. Thank you very much for that discussion and thank you to all our viewers for joining us. Inshallah, we'll have more discussions on hummus next time on Ahkam SOS. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Ah, ah, ah.